Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of EID Pari India Limited, hosted by DAM Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anmol Gurk from DAM Capital Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to the Q4 FY22 conference call of EID Perry Limited. We have with us Mr. Suresh, a managing director of the company, Mr. Uh, Murkappan, whole time director and CEO, Mr. A. Sridhar, CFO, Mr. Suresh Kanan, whole time director, Perry Sugars, and Mr. Biswa Mohanrat, company secretary. So, uh, without any further ado, I'll hand over the call to Mr. Suresh. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking your time out and joining this call. Uh, at the outset, I would like to uh, just uh, announce the happy news that Mr. Muttu Murugappan, Mutaya Murugappan, has joined us as the uh, in the board as a whole time director, and he is also the CEO for the business. So, with that good news, I would like to go ahead with the opening remarks. Uh, on the global scenario, uh, the record Indian production has overshadowed the lower output in other countries. So, for the FY21-22 of the sorry, for the sugar year 21-22, uh, we are expected to be a, a surplus of almost 1.26 million tons. Is what is expected in the global scenario. As per the Zarnico report, what we understand is global per capita sugar consumption has been hit during this pandemic years. Uh, it has gone to the levels of 2009. However, it is poised to recover and grow more than 1.5 percent per annum. China's output is not expected to reach uh, the 10 million metric tons in the current year. Um, this may lead to import of raw sugar. The ongoing uh, uh, Ukraine issues uh, are expected to negatively impact the sugar consumption in uh, Ukraine and Russia. However, the refined sugar demand is expected to be robust, keeping the trade flows balanced. India is expected to export significant volumes in uh, sugar year 22 23. Um, of course, we have to keep in mind the record exports which already happened in sugar year 21 22. So, uh, according to Platts, the higher global energy prices uh, are supportive for the hydrous ethanol price in Brazil. So, we may uh, Brazil may go for a lower sugar milk estimates for the central south. Uh, so that means higher level of sugar diversion to ethanol uh, will happen, and that is also going to happen in India as well. Coming to the uh, performance of the company, uh, the consolidated revenue from operations for the year ended 31st March 2022 was at rupees 23, 5, uh, 23,528 crores, registering an increase of 27% against the previous year of rupees 18,556 crores. Earnings before depreciation, interest, taxes, and exceptional items, big call for the year ended 31st March 2022, was at rupees 26,29 crores, registering an increase of 18% against previous year of rupees 22,19 crores. The consolidated profit at the tax was rupees 1,574 crores against the previous year of rupees 1,000 crores. Coming to the standalone performance for the FY21-22, the standalone revenue from operations for the year ended 31st March 2022 was at rupees 2,496 crores against the previous year of rupees 2,024 crores. And earnings before depreciation interest taxes and exceptional items for the year ended was rupees 492 crores against the previous year of 556 crores. Standalone profit after tax was rupees 284 crores against rupees 865 crores in the previous year. The profit tax, profit after tax for the year ended 31st March 2022 includes exceptional loss of rupees 14 crores arising from sale of plant and machinery in Puducherry unit, 
as compared to the exceptional gain of rupees 715 crores in the previous year arising from the sale of 4% stake in Coromandel International Limited, net of impairment and Tirukota asset transfer expenses. I must say that the top line of the business, has, uh, the standalone business has grown by almost 23% over the previous year. The, the exceptional performance has been made possible by the increase in the cane volume from a 39.5 lakh tons to a level of almost 50 lakh tons uh, for the year 21-22. Also, the business has been able to capitalize the opportunity in the market by exporting close to 1,72,000 tons of sugar. A distillery volume also has grown tremendously from almost 5.9 crores of uh, previous year. For the year FI 21-22, we have done almost 8.5 crore liters of uh, distillery volumes. Also, on the power side, we have been able to capitalize on the market opportunities in the power and uh, that has also contributed well to the business. Company focused on setting the assets and expansion in core areas, uh, maintaining the optimum cost levels. Uh, I have to mention that the transfer of assets from Pudukkotai unit in Tamil Nadu to the Halayal unit in Karnataka has been completed. And during the year, 1.45 lakh metric tons was crashed, crashed during the uh, financial year of 21-22. Also, the distillery expansion of 60 KLPD a facility in Bagal Court has uh, come online and it has run full. And uh, the debt reduction program, uh, what we had undertaken, has helped in the reduction of finance costs from Rs. 93 crores in the year 2021 to 46 crores in the year 21-22. With these comments, I would now uh, hand it over to uh, Mr. Sridhar, our CFO, to take you through further details. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh, and uh, good afternoon to all uh, participants. I am extremely happy to be a part of this endless call um, uh, to share key information of the operating and financial performance of the company. Uh, while uh, Mr. Suresh presented uh, about the industry perspective and uh, the standalone and consolidated financials of the company, I would like to share uh, the key operating parameters of each of the segments in which we are operating. Uh, to start with, uh, on the sugar uh, operations, uh, all of our uh, plants uh, operated during uh, quarter four, and uh, the, the year-to-date crushing uh, was about 50.21 lakh metric tons when compared to last year, which was at 39.69 lakh metric tons. Uh, the recovery also has been uh, uh, better than uh, the previous year. The year-to-date uh, recovery was 10.63% uh, compared to last year, which was at 10.28%. Uh, the production volumes were at 4.87 lakh metric tons compared to last year, which was at 3.92 lakh metric tons. Uh, the cost of cane uh, was at 3,255 rupees uh, per metric ton compared to the previous year which was at 3,071 rupees uh, per uh, metric ton. Uh, the sales for the year had been about 4,95,000, uh, uh, 4.95 lakh metric tons in which uh, the domestic was about 3.25 lakh metric tons and uh, we had a record export of almost about 1.70 lakh metric tons. In the previous year, the sales volume were at uh, 4 lakh uh, metric tons, of which uh, domestic was about 2.85 lakh metric tons and exports about 1.15 lakh metric tons. Uh, the uh, selling price uh, was at uh, 34.48 uh, compared to previous year, which was at 34 rupees uh, 4 paise. And uh, even in exports, uh, our realizations uh, in, Sorry, yeah. as far as the exports are concerned, our realizations were at 33 rupees 46 paise as against uh, 34 rupees uh, uh, 3 paise. This 33 rupees 46 paise is without uh, uh, the subsidy element in the six month, the second half of the year. Uh, the closing stock was at 2.55 lakh uh, metric tons. Um, the revenue from sugar operations has been at uh, 1,839 lakh crores and uh, in the previous year it was about 1,500 crores that is an increase of almost about 23% uh, over the previous year. I would like to uh, 
put on record that uh, no cane uh, overdues as of today. All FRP paid uh, on time. As far as the power is concerned, uh, the power generation has been about uh, 4,110 lakh uh, units uh, compared to previous year, which was about uh, 3,763 lakh units, and of which the exported units were about uh, 2,141 lakh uh, units as against the previous year, which was at 2,054 lakh uh, units. Uh, the tariff uh, was at 4 rupees 35 paise per unit against uh, the previous year, which was at 4 rupees 15 paise per unit. We had a gain of almost about 20 paise over the previous uh, uh, year. And uh, on the distillery sales, uh, we sold about 8 lakh 847 thousand, 8, 847 lakh liters compared to the previous year, which was at 594 uh, lakh liters. And uh, the selling price was at uh, 57.88 per liter as against uh, the previous year, which was at 55.42 lakh. Getting into the neutral segment, uh, the year-to-date turnover uh, was about uh, 63.62 crores as against uh, the previous year, which was uh, about uh, 71.74 uh, uh, crores. Uh, this reduction is on account of uh, reduced production due to the incremental uh, weather conditions. And on a consolidated level, the neutra business had uh, increased its revenue compared to previous year. The turnover was at uh, 277 crores compared to the previous year, which was about 255 uh, crores. As far as the refinery operations are concerned, uh, the operating revenue was at 2,005 uh, crores compared to previous year, which was about 2,251 uh, crores. And uh, the PBT is a loss of about 13.27 uh, uh, crores. Last year, the loss was about uh, 138 crores. And uh, the refined sugar production was at uh, 6.11 lakh metric tons as against the previous year which was at 7.89 lakh uh, metric tons. And the sales volume uh, of a refinery was at uh, 6.23 lakh metric tons as against the previous year which was at uh, 8.21 uh, lakh metric tons. As Mr. Sh Suresh had uh, stated in the beginning, uh, we had uh, worked on a debt reduction program during the uh, last uh, few years, and uh, the long-term borrowing, so which is about 100 crores, and uh, this is uh, also to do, uh, do with uh, the projects which uh, we are being executed at uh, Bagal Court, and those which we are also initiated at uh, Sankli. Uh, these are the long-term borrowings which we have taken from the bank, and we have a subvention benefit on account of uh, those. The short-term borrowings have almost been uh, nil, and uh, as far as uh, PSRIPL is concerned, uh, the borrowings has been at uh, 648 crores, and this is purely to do with uh, the working capital uh, that was uh, required for the operations. With this, I would like to I mean, uh, uh, close, and I uh, would like to hear from you all. Uh, if there are any questions, we would like to I mean, be answering this. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question Please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Akshay Ajmera from Nilzar Securities LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir, and congratulations on a very good set of numbers. So, uh, regarding this uh, peta vithalai plant, uh, the original plan was to shift the plant from peta vithalai to Bagalkot, and then 
so it has not happened so uh, what exactly uh, was the issue of uh, because of which we are not able to shift the plant to uh, badal court was there any scarcity of cane availability or it was not feasible to move the plant and what was the total realization that we have received by uh, sending of that yeah uh, the the total realization part mr sridhar will answer you on the uh, point of uh, the original idea of shifting the assets to bagal that was emphasized some two years back we did uh, uh, assess the cane availability and the potential competition for the available cane from the nearby mills Um, if you look at just I'm taking a parallel of Haliyal. Haliyal is a standalone unit, almost in the nearby 120 kilometer radius. There is no other sugar mill available, so there is a plenty of cane availability. Whereas in the case of Bagal Court, quite a large number of mills are available, and new capacities were also getting added. So in the light of that, uh, plus the certain areas of Bagal Court also have certain low sugar varieties also available. Farmers prefer more of low, low sugar variety to the certain other pest related challenges over there. So if you have to be choosy, then we may have to ignore those low sugar varieties. If you are going to put invest there over there, we will be uh, scrambling for cane because Karnataka, though there is uh, availability of uh, command area of concept, in practice it is not getting followed. So you need to get assured quantum of gain when I am going to put an investment over there, which was there in Haliyal, and we transferred the uh, Pudukota assets to Haliyal. In the case of Bagal Court, where we did not have that level of assurance and certainty in the availability of gain, we better thought that the uh, whatever the uh, assets uh, available at Peta can be monetized and they can be put to productive use for a better return on the capital employed. Hence the reason to sell the assets off. And uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the realization, what we got out of the search is uh, for almost uh, 57.5 crores uh, for the equipment. Okay, sir. Thank you. And for the plant and machinery. For the plant and machinery. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, uh, on the on the ethanol side, the, although we have uh, commendable volumes uh, and we have grown significantly, but Uh, if we talk about realizations uh, per liter, it has gone uh, down as compared to last year. So, uh, how we how would we uh, see that? Then it is not. See the uh, you, the realization of the alcohol as a weighted average has gone down. For the ethanol, whatever is the government realization, it has gone up. The mix is also there between ENA and ethanol. ENA prices have dropped. last year compared to the previous year hence we are seeing a relatively lower weighted average realization for alcohol okay okay thank you sir uh, i i'll get back in the queue for the next question yes sir thank you the next question is from the line of pavin chetta from inam holdings please go ahead uh, yeah good afternoon sir Uh, so if you can uh, share the refinery debt number and the refinery inventory separately what are the gross borrowings and cash there yeah, good, good afternoon uh, as far as refinery is concerned they had a closing debt of 648 uh, crores response to uh, around the 1.2 lakh tons of uh, raw sugar and around 50000 tons of white sugar inventory uh, 648 crores okay this includes uh, term debt and working capital debt right sir so the term debt is uh, 200 crores separate the 648 is a working capital debt okay term debt is 200 crores and working capital is 648 okay and uh, uh, right now wh- what are the steady state uh, numbers there in terms of uh, how much is the uh, uh conversion cost there and uh, premiums uh, overall yeah, at the moment uh, as you can appreciate we are in a very inflationary scenario as far as both uh, fuel chemicals uh, packing material is uh, concerned so our costs have moved up uh, compared to the previous years 
and uh, to a large extent uh, this increase is also seen in the market in the form of improvement of spreads so we could have a, a, in, a lag or a lead effect with respect to the inflationary uh, fuel increase vis a vis the what we can require out of the market and what are the currently if you can share the spreads yeah currently we are uh, between 50 to 60 dollars uh, depend, depending upon the market uh, conditions uh, that are prevailing now spread of 50 to 60 dollars okay okay and uh, regarding uh, nutraceutical uh, uh, what's the outlook there when can you scale that numbers and how the profitability will uh, uh, improve uh, in that segment because uh, there hasn't been uh, substantial uh, improvement in profitability there so what's the road map there so on the nutra segment i think the uh, the stand alone numbers were uh, impacted because of bad uh, weather because of the monsoon season and that had an impact on the on the harvest uh, so that's why the stand alone was badly impacted we uh, have Uh, taken some corrective measures uh, from the plant infrastructure perspective so we don't uh, you know see that uh, recurring this year uh, in terms of the uh, the balance of business which is the uh, the business in the us i think we will continue to invest in the brand building activities of the uh, flowmentum product which is the uh, prostate health brand um, this year as well um, so to that extent there will be a, a burn um, i think we will start seeing uh, those numbers uh, scale from next year onwards and i think we'll then get back into profitability okay thank you sir i'll come back for more questions here thank you thank you the next question is from the line of gautam dedia from nalanda sorry nalanda securities private limited please go ahead hi so so just continuing on the previous participants question So at fifty to sixty dollars spreads in the refinery, and with coal costs that are ranging between three hundred to four hundred dollars on a yearly basis, do you think we can break even? I think uh, fair, fair question. Uh, with the current level of spread, and as long as we can continue to uh, source this uh, from uh, India, uh, coal has started giving up a little bit in terms of the increases that what we have seen. so it is possible to produce uh, you know break even or uh, slightly favorable results uh, as far as refining is concerned so and in this quarter whatever profit we have made there's no one off right in this there's no m to m gains or any foreign exchange gains yeah as far as the fourth quarter profit is concerned it has got an element of uh, forex gain because that gain because of the nature of the uh, contract accrues to us in the fourth quarter So, if you discount that, also the quarter is uh, profitable to the extent of around 13 to 14 crores. Okay. So, and uh, on the nutraceutical division, so flumentum would be what proportionate proportion of the prostate sales that you've shown in the presentation? Oh, it's very negligible. I think the prostate sales this year we've talked about 120 odd crores uh, yeah. is negligible. It's so, it's a new brand. It's only been launched a year ago, so it's in the very early stages. So I think at the right time we'll start giving you. I think we we are of course seeing the uh, the data on a very consistent basis. But at the right time we we'll start uh, uh, you know um, opening that up as well for your better understanding. Once we also have a good uh, good idea of the trend. Okay. So and in the retail sugar division, you mentioned that you want to target one lakh outlets by FY25. So currently, how many outlets are we targeting? So I think um, okay. So our current um, coverage is direct coverage is uh, slightly under thirty thousand outlets. Indirect will be about uh, close to fifty thousand outlets. Uh, when indirect, I mean I mean of, of wholesale coverage uh, will also reach a larger uh, number of outlets. um i think the 1 lakh outlet target uh, we will we aspire to do it before fy25 um i think by fy25 i think we need to be substantially larger if we are really going to uh, you know uh, build a business uh, sizable business vertical out of this so i think by fy25 that number uh, should be much larger and just aspirationally would it be fair to assume that uh, if we are like 250 crores in retail sales right now We we are looking at three x the size just based on the outlet coverage, or is it something substantially more? 
so i i think um, i think that that that's a fair uh, it's a fair milestone um so i think uh, i think as we promised we started opening up uh, the retail story a little bit to the uh, to the investor community so i think as we go um, you know we will uh, provide more granular detail but i think uh, gautam that's a fair milestone to have okay thank you sir and best of luck The next question is from the line of Jatin from Invest Savvy Portfolio Management. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on great results, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jatin. May I request you to come under handset mode? You are on speaker, and the audio is not very clear. Yeah, congratulations on the great results. Uh, we wanted to know that uh, what you know this. Uh, your operating margin has improved uh, is that uh, going to continue to be sustainable or uh, uh, what is the reason for that change happening and the other is how do you foresee revenues growing in the year going forward second part of the question can you see the revenue growth how do you see the revenue growth see yeah, for a type of business like us predominantly in the sugar Uh, the the better operating margins have been predominantly due to the uh, increase in volume for the given level of fixed assets what we have. So we have moved up almost from a 39.5 lakh tons to 50 lakh tons. Um, the some of the benefits of that are already shown into the current year. The incremental molasses and all will give the benefit in the uh, already shown in the last year. And the incremental, whatever is the benefits out of the extra gain, will be flowing in the current financial year. So you can expect that definitely a similar or better margins to uh, persist for the current financial year as well. And what about revenue projections? Yeah, yeah, we expect close to almost around uh, eight to ten percent of increase in cane volume growth, roughly, based on the availability of cane. Given the predictions, what the monsoon and all is giving, if everything goes well, that's what should be. It will be purely a volume gain, uh, and plus the value addition and all should add to the uh, uh, GDP increment. Hello. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritwik from one of financial consultants. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, I have a few questions. Uh, firstly, just continuing with, uh, with the cane uh, growth. Uh, uh, what would be our peak crushing output on this forty thousand tons per day capacity? you can take it up to almost uh, 20% up from the current level minimum 20% from the current level okay so so that would be a, a, a maximum crushing days of about 180 uh, days would that be a fair understanding yeah you can uh, take that but uh, weather permitting etc because these are all uh, linked to the chain availability and the weather right okay and uh, you mentioned that 8 to 10% cane crushing can be expected depending on the cane uh, procurement for uh, fy23 right sure okay and uh, so uh, my next question is on the uh, sankli uh, distillery uh, which is a green based uh, capacity which is coming up uh, so uh, what could be the total uh, potential output from this uh, distillery uh, uh yeah so almost 3.6 crore liters should get added to the uh, distillery volumes on an annual basis okay and and uh, part of it uh, we can realize in fy23 and fully in fy24 uh no this is for fy23 will be an equivalent of say 3 months 3 months okay mm. sure Sure, and sir, uh, right now we are doing about 10-11 percent margin in the distillery uh, segment on the existing capacity. 
uh, with this new capacity uh, what do you think will the margin be higher or at par uh, with the current distillery uh, margin the distillery margin is a function of the molasses cost and your uh, uh, whatever the price of ethanol or ena which is prevailing in the market Sure. So, depending on the, this is a grain-based distillery, they will be producing more of ethanol. So, that will be governed by the uh, ma, ma, price of the OMC in terms of the ethanol and also the FRP prices of the government for the king. So, there will be a normal derivative of these two parameters. That is what is going to be the distillery margin. Our costs are definitely for a higher-sized distillery. The cost will be accordingly there. And I think the margin should by and large minimum maintain that level of the existing. Maybe wherever possible, that could be an opportunity to improve. Okay, sure, sure. Sir, and just one last question. Uh, is it possible to give the FY22 uh, revenue and EBITDA figures for uh, the refinery business? Yeah, one minute, sir. Sure. We have already posted that in the website, but I would like to read it for you. Uh, the uh, revenue has been uh, sorry, 269 million dollars, and uh, EBIT has been about 4. Point, yeah, yeah, 4.7 million dollars. 4.7 million dollars. Right. And does this does this include any one off? Uh, you mentioned uh, there was some food. Not in this financial year. In FY22, there is no one off. Okay, sure. And uh, so uh, one follow up on this, you know, strategic question. Uh, in the last few years, we have faced some challenges uh, on the refinery uh, business. So, uh, you know, have we uh, or even the board have actively uh, considered to uh, hive off this business because on a capital employed of 900 to uh, almost 1,000 crores, uh, 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 we are uh, making negligible uh, return on the capital uh, employed. So, so you know, uh, is there any active consideration or any discussion internally uh, to uh, divest this business? Uh, would, would like some thoughts on that. Yeah, so I think, you know, I did, this was also discussed, I think, in one of the prior investor uh, calls. So these kind of conversations are uh, um, are always uh, are always going on. Uh, we don't have anything concrete to uh, to report. I think should we have anything concrete, we'll certainly, uh, you know, uh, keep you all up Okay. Sure, sir. Uh, thank so you. Just a, just a small clarification. Uh, you mentioned on the capital employed. Capital employed on the refinery segment is around 500 odd crores, so not... not uh, uh, 700 or 1000 so currently we are at between 6 to 7 percent return on capital okay yeah because okay in the initial comments you mentioned that 6 uh, 50 crores is a uh, short term debt and 200 odd crores is a long term debt so around and, uh, anyway that position we find that uh, the borrowings uh, uh, the long term uh, debt was about uh, 200 crores, that's uh, more of a term loan. And uh, the short term working capital uh, loan is about 648 crores. Right. That had gone up substantially in the month of March because our turnover increased as our sales was uh, higher during that month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sir. Uh, thank, you. thank you, sir, and all the best for the year. Right. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Goswami from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations on the good service numbers. Uh, my first question on the recovery in uh, Karnataka. Uh, how has been the recovery so far in this season? And going forward, how much recovery uh, are you going to expect uh, in the next uh, rest of the season and the next season as well? Uh, as far as Karnataka is concerned, the recovery has been in the range of, uh, for the current season, in the range of around 11.1% to 12.1%. Maybe plants like Halial was around 11.1%, and the plant in Ramgurh is around 121 Bagalkot is somewhere in between. 
and um, if the current season crushing uh, has to be taken as a reference and if you have a the span of uh, season running from uh, mid October to mid March i think we should be able to expect a similar level of recovery for the next year as well okay okay so and uh, did we export any uh, sugar from our dom uh, domestic plants to ex uh, refinery units this time in quarter yes. uh, there is a uh, opportunity yes uh how much volume sir this time see last year we had exported close to 172000 tons right uh, like that there is if we are limited by the release quota in terms of sales in domestic so any opportunity subject to the refinery margins uh, getting fulfilled we should be able to and also eed also getting a um, the realization for the uh, stock so we should be able to do that Okay. Uh, and so, uh, what I understand, your refinery profit uh, this time was about uh, EBIT. Uh, I'm talking about EBIT would be about 30 crores. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And you said there is a one of uh, forex gain about 12, 13 to 14 crores. So that would be about uh, quarter four. How? What is the profit without the forex gain? Uh, about 16 crores, is it? No, oh, you are right. The EBIT for the refinery for the whole year is 36 crores. Uh, the forex gain is basically a structural gain because we are operating at the dollar as a functional currency, and we are sourcing some of the debt uh, in the in the form of uh, Indian rupee. So the settled gain accrues to us uh, to, uh, towards the end of the year, and therefore it is not a one-off gain. It is part and parcel of the uh, business. So uh, uh, yeah, I hope that clarifies the question. okay okay uh, and so uh, we are expanding our 120 uh, kfd display capacity uh, since we have a still uh, a room for you know increasing our crushing capacity why are we putting our grain based uh, capacity and why, why not a molasses based so uh, this 120 kfd is a new plant it is in uh, Sampley, uh, Andhra. Uh, one is this is a grain uh, belt. Second is the cane availability is for a period of uh, almost uh, December to March. So four months is the cane availability period. So you run on the four months from the cane whatever is available in the form of syrup, and for the whatever the B molasses which is generated, you will run for two more months. Uh, after that it is not uh, economically viable to buy molasses and then run the distillery grain is always available throughout the year so where, wherever possible we should go and buy the grain and then uh, run the plant in the uh, grain form uh, this also gives a uh, different protection for the distillery in the event of any cane shortage in any particular year the grain is anyway available so the refinery can run all through the year without any stoppage for want of raw material Okay, uh, so I am to understand about uh, so you said 3.6 crore liters. So <clears throat> around 60, uh, 50 to 60 percent would be a uh, syrup and B heavy molasses. Am I right on this? On a tentative note, sir. Ah uh, no, you, you you can make it out of the uh, 10 months of running. Let us say 300 days. You can take around five months will be on syrup, syrup, uh, and the two months maybe on the B heavy. Three months equivalent will be on the grain. Okay. Okay. So be, uh, around 60-70 percent could be uh, volume could be from uh, molasses based. Yes, sir. Juice and molasses. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Uh, and sir, so, uh, what is our distillery uh, volume target for FY23 and 24? Volume target. Oh, uh, volume. थैंक
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, can you help us understand uh, what is the mix in terms of Sir, we have lost your voice. Can you please come again? Uh, so we lost his line. So shall we move to the next okay. question in the meanwhile? Yes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshay Ajmera from Nirza Securities LLP. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity again, sir. So, uh, have we sold uh, sugar from uh, standalone EIB to the refinery also this year? Yes. Yes, we have sold it. Yes, sir. How much? Uh, how much of it, sir? Is that one? Is that uh, export quantity? Is uh, the quantity that we have sold to the refinery? Almost around uh, 80, 85 thousand tons must have been shipped to the. Okay. okay, and sir, uh, the sh if we look at the Q4 number of uh, standalone sugar, the revenue has increased from you know last year. If we compare YOY number from 400 crores to the revenue has become 700 crores. Um, however, the segment results show that the PBIT at PBIT level it is still at the same level. So, how how should we read it? Can I come in? Yeah, one minute. See, our uh, costs are normalized uh, over a period of 12 months. So, I mean, uh, the optimization actually happens uh, uh, during uh, the months in which uh, we produce. So, when we, I mean, uh, depending on the stocks that is uh, available with us, the valuation of uh, the profitability also changes. So the stock adjustment uh, could be one of the reasons for the normalization which happens on the bottom line, which gets spread over the subsequent periods. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, good afternoon and uh, Congratulations once again for a good set of numbers. Uh, I had again a question on the lines of uh, some of the participants earlier. We had a large jump in the sugar revenue, and I can understand that uh, the cane cost has gone up a little bit this year. But the profitability of the sugar division hasn't gone up despite the increase in the price realization of nearly 50 pesos on an average. Uh, so I just wanted to know what is the inventory being valued at, at what, at what uh, valuation is inventory being held at as of 31st March? As of 31st March, uh, the inventory is valued around 31 rupees 90 paise. Okay, so that's that's more or less in line. So basically, it, despite crushing uh, volume going up going up by 25 percent, uh, and the inventory change is not really reflecting the kind of uh, volume and sales data. So is it partially because uh, we have sold uh, sugar to the refinery at uh, lower realization? Is that possible? No, uh, the, the sale, our export sales is based on the international prices that is prevailing on the day in which we enter into a contract. And uh, we normally enter into a contract uh, at, on those dates where actually the realizations are the best. So there, it has got nothing to do with uh, uh, the transfer price or the price at which we sell to refinery. It is based on the, uh, it is on an arm's length basis and based on the international prices prevailing on the date of contract. Right. This yeah. is almost a 50% jump in the raw material cost. So I was just wondering, uh, you know, the cane price increase is just about uh, 10 pesa. Uh, and then the, there's the, uh, vo the volume increase of about 25%. But the RM price increase is uh, much more than that. Yeah. There, see, we have the uh, Tamil Nadu government uh, had announced... Uh, I mean, has withdrawn the transport uh, subsidy. That is one reason uh, our, uh, I mean, we could not, uh, I mean, our cane prices went up. The, yeah. See, one more thing you should keep in mind is that the volume of crash 
uh, which has happened in the last quarter, the benefit of that in terms of molasses, bagas, etc., will flow in the subsequent year because we will not be able to monetize the byproduct uh, benefits in the same period. In fact, incidentally, the Q4 of current year has crushed significantly more volumes compared to the Q4 of the previous year. Practically, the entire quantity will be sitting in stock, whether it is sugar at a better recovery, or whether it is molasses, or whether it is bagas or further matter anything. Hence, you may not be able to get the benefit of the, the uh, last financial year. That should subsequently flow in the next financial year. Added to that is the impact of 15 crores what uh, uh, our CFO was saying about the transport subsidy which was there in the FI 2021, which has been since withdrawn FRP 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 21, FRP increase. Because FRP increase impact is also there. Right, sir. So, would you be uh, able to give me the closing inventories of, uh, other than sugar, sugar as well, molasses and uh, uh, bagasse, uh, the figures? Yeah, one. We will share that information with you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that was actually the main question I had because the jump in the sugar turnover, uh, how to read it? in terms of profitability going forward, it's going to uh, partially impact in one queue. Is that what you're saying? So one... Yes, yes. I mean, because uh, I mean, I, as I mentioned to you earlier, being the seasonal industry with five months of production, uh, the inventory holding uh, uh, and the carrying cost gets spread over in the subsequent periods. Right, sir. And my second question was, sir, you uh, in your cash flow statement in the standalone business, you mentioned the 200 crore repayment by subsidiary uh, uh, in terms of intercorporate loan. So I understand that was the loan given to the refinery business. So even after that repayment, there is a 200 crore term debt. Is that correct? Very true. Yes. Uh, with refineries, uh, there is a 200 uh, crore term, term loan still uh, due from there. Right. And that 680 crore working capital position, like what is, uh, how do we read it going forward? Is going to come down substantially this quarter? This quarter. Is it for EAD Paris is what you're asking or is it for refinery? Paris refinery, Paris refinery, Paris refinery. Refinery, just a minute. Yeah, as far as the refinery is concerned, uh, one of the reasons, as what Mr. Sridhar earlier explained, one of the reasons for increase in the uh, short-term loan is also on account of price increase. Uh, sugar prices, as you may recall, have gone up by close to 30-35% on an average on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, however, we are working in terms of a better turnaround uh, cycle. So I think we might be in a position to uh, you know, move between 400 to 500 crores of uh, short-term trade. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parin Gala from Sage One Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hold after moving that loan from Tamil Nadu, Kodikotai to uh, Halial, and also one held for sale and some other land that we might hold. So how much is that surplus kind of land that we would be holding in the company and what are the plans with that kind of surplus land? See, the, uh, the process of uh, uh, disposal of machinery is on in the Petawai Pali plant. They have just concluded the sale deal and the process itself will take almost six to nine months time. After that only we will be looking at the uh, opportunity for uh, monetizing the land. But how much would be the land bank, sir, with a surplus land bank? Land bank? I will we'll just get back to you. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's all for my Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Maheshwari from Premji Invest. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity and thanks for the uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, so, just uh, one question on slightly uh, two to three year outlook. Uh, looking at ROC targets for the business, I understand that um, uh, there are multiple moving parts in the business as well as the refinery piece. But uh, just overall, when we look at, say, 7%. 
uh, uh, ROC targets or the refinery release? How do you think about it from a, a medium term perspective, especially when uh, our uh, subsidiaries uh, passing on money at a very high ROC, uh, sort of uh, generating high ROCs and passing out on as dividends? So just wanted your thoughts on how you will think about it. Sorry, can you just repeat that question? So the question is on the refinery ROC, is it? No, it's on the overall ROC. We understand that refinery can be more or less, but at a standalone level, is there a ROC targets? Especially when we typically uh, been generating strong ROC at a subsidiary level. And when that comes on, uh, it needs to be passed on as dividends or whatever the way you think about the business going forward. So just wanted to understand the overall capital allocation strategy uh, that that uh, the team is working with today. Okay, so I'm I'm seeing a number of questions in uh, within your question. So let me uh, let me address the ROC uh, first. So I think the um, uh, from current levels, yes, the, the aspiration is to move up, and I think we are. Uh, confident of the of the visibility on that front. I think the work that we've done uh, in terms of relocation of plants, uh, in terms of uh, you know better recoveries, in terms of volumes of cane crush, in terms of the tailwinds from the uh, ethanol blending program. I think all of that will lead to uh, uh, you know uh, a better better metrics. And I think uh, we certainly see we don't give forward guidance. Um, so, uh, but we are seeing a good. Uh, a good scope there in terms of incremental ROCs, and we'd like to get to uh, get to industry standards, at least the uh, the best in class uh, industry standards. Uh, so, in terms of the broader capital allocation strategy, so I, I think um, you know you will see us allocating more capital to first growth areas. I think the whole biofuels program is a, is a growth area. I think we've allocated capital to that. You see us setting up a distillery. Uh, in terms of you know moving our assets into higher recovery zones, um, we've done that in, uh, in by moving Pudukote uh, into the Haryar unit. Uh, beyond that, I think you've seen some of our uh, uh, data on the retail and the retail growth. I think that's another area which is the capital allocation. As mentioned, we need to get uh, way beyond one lakh outlets. I think you know and to have a good detailed playbook, I think we need to be north of two lakh outlets. So that we'll see uh, capital allocation. Uh, and we are uh, taking um, sort of some under, deeper understanding of the neutral segment to see uh, what the growth areas can be. And I think once we have done that, I think that's another area where we will allocate resources. So I think this is where the uh, company capital allocation will be uh, centered around in the years uh, years to come. Got it, sir. This is helpful. But uh, uh, just in terms of the uh, standalone business today, we'll be able to generate uh, strong cash flows going by uh, all the initiatives that you've taken up. Will that be sufficient to fund it, or uh, we would continue to look at uh, deploying capital in form of subsidy that we receive from a uh, sort of uh, uh, subsidiary as well? No, so I think it will be largely from uh, from internal accruals. I mean, yeah, we, I think as we as we deploy capital, we will determine what is the best uh, best construct of uh, of that deployment. But I think we're confident. I think for the reasons stated just a few minutes ago, uh, we should see uh, you know better internal accruals in the business itself. Fair enough. This is very helpful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Sancheti, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, sure. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to know what is the uh, realization for ethanol, uh, especially from setup, PAV, CAV, and ENA? In this quarter, uh, the the heavy realizations were at uh, 58 rupees seven paise, and uh, syrup was about uh, 63 rupees uh, 27 paise, and uh, CAV was at around 47. What, uh, 47? Yeah, that's right. And what about ENA? ENA was uh, at around. Uh, uh, 56 rupees. 56 rupees. 
I think in uh, one of the previous questions you had said that the ENA prices have fallen down. Uh, is that correct? That's right. That's right. Compared uh, to the previous year. To the previous year. Okay. What was the? Uh, uh, can you just tell me the quantum of the fall or how how much was it previous year? Previous year was about sixty one rupees. Sixty one rupees. And this has been all over India or uh, only in uh, the southern market? It was more in Tamil Nadu. Predominantly, the EMA is sold more in Tamil Nadu, where there has been a lot of uh, inflow of the EMA from the neighboring states that has led to the fall in the price. Okay. Uh, so, are we looking at uh, you know setting up ENA plans where, like uh, something like a state of West Bengal, uh, where uh, the ENA prices are higher than uh, even the I mean um, uh, ethanol prices? Uh, are we looking for something like that, uh, a, a setting up uh, or, or setting up uh, uh, ENA plant in future? Uh, sir, actually, the, the raw material for the plant will have to be in the last uh, unlike ethanol, where you can even have grain, uh, predominantly it is from uh, molasses if you make. Uh, you need to have enough cane sourcing availability. So, okay. in the absence of that, uh, we may not be looking at that. Yeah, and I can see that the profitability of the distillery plant has been uh, excellent. So, uh, and we are also looking at uh, almost a uh, increasing our capacity by more than 100 KLPD, 110 KLPD. Uh, are we in future? Are we looking for any more uh, expansion plants? See, further expansion plants because already this for the financial year we have got the 120 KLPD at Sankri. We will have to see the opportunity in terms of cane availability. Uh, the, uh, we, there are uh, we can, every sugar unit can have its distillery. For example, Pugalo, uh, or for example, maybe additional Nellikupam. We have to only evaluate the sustained cane availability for the next three to five year time frame. Because for a typical ethanol project to pay back, it takes four to five years. Once you see an assured cane availability, then you should, and also the government's policies uh, continuation in terms of ethanol blending. Then we should uh, will be in a better position to take the call on uh, future investments. As uh, Mutu was pointing out, those are the high margin areas. But if there is an assurance in terms of the raw material availability and also the market for it, then definitely we'll be looking at that. So then, what about uh, uh, is ethanol, which is being produced with from grains, especially rice, broken rice? Uh, are we looking into getting into that? In fact, uh, the, for Andhra plant, the Sankiri plant 120 KLPD is also uh, designed with the molasses as well as the grain as a feedstock. So already uh, you think to that. Uh, at present, we are not looking at uh, putting a plant exclusively based on grain. Okay. Because I think the availability of that raw material will be far easier than, uh, I mean, uh, than uh, getting into the, the, the sugar cane. Always uh, it is uh, green the other side, so that is a... Uh, oh, it's... Uh, so you'll have to evaluate the thing. It's better to have uh, a multi-feed stock for us uh, at any point in time that can mitigate the risk in a better way. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Goswami from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, so my question is that going forward, where is the room for improvement in the margin? Uh, is there at all in there? And my second question is that are we uh, exhausted our uh, opportunity of distillery capacity expansion in Halyal? Because Halyal now has a crushing capacity of 12,000 PCD. And as you mentioned that the skin availability is better uh, than the rest of the area. So, and but we have only 50 KLPD of distillery in Halyal. So can we look in any more expansion in Halyal uh, to exhaust the distillery opportunity there? See, uh, Halyal, uh, I think this year we should uh, allow the second plant to perform to the fullest, get the full mileage out of it, then continuously explore the opportunity to uh, top up another distillery over there. Uh, that's what we will be doing. Uh, we will have to see uh, how, how this all transpires because uh, uh, this just now uh, last year only I invested close to almost 120-130 crores into the Halyal plant. So we will uh, face it out accordingly based on the opportunity. 
and so uh, going forward what is the room for margin improvement in our business or all business like sugar refinery and uh, distillery and nutraceuticals yeah in a business uh, in fact all the businesses what you have mentioned with so many factors which are beyond the control of the business uh, continuous margin improvement only has brought the business to these levels what you are seeing in terms of results and uh, definitely there are uh, opportunities but the thing is we are talking about improving from here on so continuous cost reduction opportunities will be explored and uh, we will be uh, looking at it in the years to come Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. Ladies and gent gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. <laughs> As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, taking time out and then joining this call. Uh, <coughs> and we, we will be meeting you in the three months from now in the next call. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of DM Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.